Mark the center line on the neck and the center line on our neck width in template. So I can line that up there, um, center it, and also make sure that this edge is lined up with the nut. I'm going to do that now. I'm not going to use any accelerant because I need I might need time to move it. Rad bit's not tall enough, which I knew, but then I didn't realise, of course, that that's going to touch the rad bit if I get too close. So, how am I going to get in there? I mean, I can turn it up this way and route it, but you know, I haven't got a flat surface to put it on. Okay, just to let you know what's going on, this is a set of really cheap Chinese router bits that I bought uh, when I first bought my router because I had no idea how to route and what bits you needed and how it all worked. So I just bought this thing. And it's been really good in so far as letting me know what pieces I need to do the kind of work I do. So from that point of view, it's great. But the pieces, the, the bits are terrible, as I kind of thought they would be. They are dull very quickly and they also get uh, chips out of the blades really quickly. Even, I've only, like this one here was only used to cut pine plywood and it obviously got hot and it's chipped quite a few of them have got chip blades so they're terrible but I then went on and bought something that's a little bit more expensive not expensive but a little bit more whoops I just dropped the bearing uh, so I've got another one of them here this will show you what they look like this is a really good one for guitar building so I don't know if you can see it through the plastic it's got a bearing on the top and the bottom so you can follow your uh, templates and stuff now get this bearing out, ah. put that one back in here, I've got exactly the same one here, uh, I've taken the top bearing off and that's the one you probably just saw me using, I originally though didn't want to do that, uh, I have bought a few quite expensive bits, which I will show you, here's one here, this is uh, a bit from Arden, actually it's a half inch shank, the other's a quarters, and this is two inches or 50 mils long, it's actually slightly over 50, and has a uh, piece at the top. So these are called flush trim router bits. If the bearing's at the bottom, they're called pattern following router bits. And if they've got a bearing at the top and the bottom, they're usually called flush trim double bearing router bits. Anyway, a really long one like this is great for doing necks. So the whole idea was that I would have had the neck here and run this along and cut the whole thing. But I foolishly cut the bottom section out here uh, just yesterday, <laughs> forgetting that I had planned to do it this way. The reason I can't do it here is because the bearing's at the top. So that's why I was using the other one where I took the top bearing off and was just using the bottom bearing. Bottom bearings for me are much better, but they're hard to get in the sizes that you want. Anyway. This section up here, I do have a flat section I can put it on and still have the bearing at the top. So um, I will probably do that just to get rid of this bit and fix that up. And I might try and use it just up this end bit here as well to fix that up. So that's what I'm going to try and do now.
Well, I thought it might happen. It's just torn that piece off. Actually, didn't damage it. It's because the router was going this, spinning this way, that it hooked under the timber. So when I did this one, I knew it would be alright because it was cutting down on it. But this one, I thought I it might. I was thinking I would get a piece just tear out and break off. It's actually just lifted the whole piece off. So the glue didn't do its job. I'm kind of glad, but I think I need to. I think I need to switch glues. Unfortunately, it has got in underneath. You can see when I try and just put it back on here that it's a little chip out just there. So it's got in underneath, lifted a little bit, then hit that and ripped the whole thing off. But I'll have to make a new piece and put it on. That is unfortunate. That said, I think the headstock, like there, there that's with that, that's looking really good now. It's going to look nice when I fix this. <laughs> okay, we've been uh, flattening the sides and stuff for the body, which I found really annoying. Got a bit stressed, so I'm going to do a bit, have a bit of fun now because I love using the spoke shave. I love using the plane, actually. Even though I'm not that good at planning, I love doing it. And spoke shaving, I'm not bad at actually. I found a I kind of have an affinity for it. I like it. It's fun, and I just like shaping this. It's quite creative because nothing has to be super precise. I've already got the width of the neck here. As long as I don't carve into that, we're okay. And um, yeah, I can just carve a shape that feels good to me. I need to get this down a bit as well, where I've got kind of a volute here. I need to get these edges of it down a bit, so I'll have a go at that. And yeah, just basically enjoy myself. Okay, seems to be set at an okay setting for now. Just to get that rough bit off. thought I'd bring you in to show you this. So this spotted gum loves to tear out. You can see this chunk here coming off. I was going this way with the spoke shave and I got a little bit of what looked a little bit teary out ish here. So I thought I'll try the other direction. So I went the other direction and boom, ripped this off and you can see here a chunk down the center just ripped out. So it looks like for the entire neck I'm gonna have to go in this direction when uh, when we're going near the spotted gum. The maple uh, doesn't seem to mind which direction I go. It's not really tearing out much. And because it, if it does tear out the maple, it tears out like a small piece. And so it's not a problem because I just get it close and then I can sand it. But this spotted gum, uh, it loves to just rip out. So we'll just try fixing that bit up now. Going this way. Actually, when I'm doing this part of the neck, I probably should secure, pull this whole thing back. Anyway. Okay. It's basically fixing it up without a problem going this way. Okay. So, this direction, it doesn't seem to mind. The thing is with this spotted gum, because the grain moves around so much, it might be fine here, and then I get down here, and you have to go the other direction, so time will tell. It would seem that I need to learn more about grain direction. When going this way, where's my finger? When I'm going that direction, 
the spotted gum tears out. I actually smoothed this out again and then went a couple of passes just lightly this way and I got that tear out. So it's got to go this way at the moment anyway. The, the maple, unfortunately, needs to go, uh, needs, to, needs to actually go in this direction. When I go that direction, I get tear out like this and this. So to prevent the maple tearing out, I need to go this way. To prevent the spotted gum tearing out, I need to go this way. At the moment, it's not too big an issue, but once I get close to this, so I've got a feeling this is going to be a lot of sanding. So I've been doing a bit more trying to smooth this bit out and lower this a little bit. I probably have to lower this with files because the spoke shave hits that edge and just tears out timber. So I probably and I can't go this way because it rips out the uh, spotted gum really badly coming this way. So I have to go this direction. So this will probably have to be filed down initially to slope it. Uh, anyway, so this little bit of tear out here didn't even see that happen. Uh, but yeah. And you can see there's lots of tear out here. Some of this tear out was because I was coming from this direction trying to get this smoothed out. And I really had, you can't really, I don't know, I can't anyway, I can't spoke shave uphill. <laughs> it kind of gets caught, so I have to come down the slope. Um, so I'll probably get a bit of tear out when I start doing this part here a little bit more. Uh, and that's how I got that tear out there. Uh, once, uh, yeah, and then I'll start going this way again and start smoothing it out again. I think. I've got plenty of room, like at the moment, checking this with my calipers, it's just rough. At the moment we're at 23 millimeters, and it can, my, my prototype guitar, this is without a fretboard, was 15 millimeters. So I've got plenty of room, so I'm learning as I'm spoke shaving, I'm learning what's most likely to make it. Uh, tear out and you have to basically do very fine have the blade set very fine so it takes a, a very small amount at a time that seems to help but obviously when, once I get within about gee whiz three millimeters because some of these can go up to three millimeters deep these tear outs so once I get within a few millimeters I'm just gonna have to hand sand it down the last few mils thank you for watching that's about all we can do to the neck until we get the body on because I need to carve the neck and body together in that section. So our next episode will be making the body. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe to Cheapskate.